So what are the common IPv6 unicast address or global unicast address? So a GUA is also called an aggregatable GUA. This type of address is globally unique and is used by hosts. This is where internet is using. So if you're using the IPv6 for internet, you need to use the global unicast address. So this is how it's started. So the three bit is AVI 001, 001 here. Then we have a global routing prefix, which is 48 bits and we have 16 bit of a subnet. Remember that GUA always have a 64 bit for the interface uh, ID. So the network address and interface ID of GUA are uh, 64 bit. Global address is assigned by provider and it have to be at least 45 bit. Then we have the subnet and organization can divide uh, the subnet based on the requirements. So you have a 16 bit for you to uh, do the subnetting. And finally, we have the uh, interface ID, which is 64 bit. So this is GUA. A global unicast address. Then we look into ULA. A ULA is a private IPv6 address or unique local address that can be used only on an intranet. Okay, so you can see that ULA is not used in the internet. This type of address cannot be routed on the public and therefore cannot be used to directly access a public network. Think about it as your private IP address. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So the 8-bit address, this is a C. Then you have the global ID generated by pseudo random algorithm. So this global ID is random then we have a subnet and the interface so just remember that this start with uh, FC so then we have a global then slash 7 address segment among which only uh, FD 00 colon colon 8 is currently being used and uh, FC 00 colon colon slash 8 is reserved for future expansion although the unique local address is valid only in a limited range it also has a global unit prefix all right using the pseudo random algorithm so that they do not have a conflict. All right, so this is an example on how you can use the ULA unique local address. Then we look into a link local address or LLA. And LLA is another type of IPv6 address which is limited application scope. Limited application scope means that it is not being used in the internet and it's not being used in the intranet either. The valid range of LLA is FE80. In fact, you can actually look into your IP config if you are using the Windows 10, you can see that we have a FE80. So you can see that it's a 1111, which is F1110, which is a E, and uh, then you have a 80, 80 over here. So the link local is used for communication in a single link, such as during IPv6 Slack and IPv6 neighbor discovery. So Slack is your slateless address configuration. Data packet with the source or destination IPv6 address being a LLA are not forwarded out of the original link. In other words, the valid scope of LLA is just on the link local. You can see that if a FE80 is only within themselves. So each IPv6 uh, interface must have an LLA. Huawei devices support automatic generation and manual configuration of a link local address. IPv6 multicast address. An IPv6 multicast address identifies multiple interfaces and is generally used in one to many. So this is important. It is one to many communication scenario. So this is a multicast just like IPv4. An IPv6 multicast address can be used only as a destination address of the IPv6 packet. So here we have the IPv6 uh, multicast address. As you can see, the first 8 bit is all one. So which means that the multicast always start with FF. Then we have the uh, 4 bit, uh, which is a flag and the 4 bit, which is a scope. The flag we can have uh, the value of uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, or we can have a 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0 means that this is a uh, permanent and uh, 0, 0, 1 means that it's a transcend. Okay, so this is the flag for the uh, 4 bit. Then we also have a scope. Scope indicate the multicast uh, scope group. So the scope, we have a few. So we do have a scope of uh, 0, 1, two, five, eight, E, and the F. So this is a scope. Now each of these uh, number represent uh, some uh, scope here. For example, 
Uh, two basically means it's a local scope. Five is a site local. Okay, so you can refer back uh, into this uh, manual if you are interested on the scope. I just want to tell you that this is the scope on the 4-bit. And we also have the group ID. So the group ID, which is this part here, this is our multicast group ID. So now you can see we have the uh, multicast address using the IPv6. In this diagram, you can see we have a multicast source here, which is sent to the multicast uh, network, which is using IPv6. And because here you have a non-receiver, so you can see that the traffic doesn't actually send here. But the traffic do send here because I do have two receiver over here. Okay, these are the two receiver. This is how the multicast uh, work. Now let's look into solicited node multicast address. If a node has an IP unicast, IPv6 unicast, or any cast address, any cast refer to one to the nearest. I'll explain that later on. A solicited node multicast address is generated for the address. So you can see I have two addresses. One is unicast or any cast. And at the same interface, I also can have another address called solicited node multicast. So what is this solicited node? So this node joined the corresponding multicast group. If you remember on my previous slide, I do mention FF. Uh, this start with FF and then the, this is a multicast. So FF02 followed by uh, quad 0, quad 0, quad 0, quad 0, triple 0, 1, FF. This is what we call the solicited node multicast. So this is uh, used for neighbor discovery. So there's the solicited node multicast 4. So what is a neighbor discovery? Let me explain later on. And it's also used for DAD or duplicate address detection. So now I want you to remember that solicited node multicasts have two uh, use. One is for neighbor discovery and another one is for duplicate address detection. A solicited node multicast is valid only on the local link. So remember the scope that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, two means that it's a link local scope. So let's look into a neighbor discovery. If you still remember in uh, IPv4, we do have our ARP. But in IPv6, we do not have ARP anymore. So what we have over here is we are going to use the neighbor discovery. The neighbor discovery they are using ICMP v6. Okay, so this is how they discover the neighbor. For example, if let's say I want to look for my neighbor, which is in layer two. So if you still remember layer two, it, we work based on a MAC address. But in IPv4, we use ARP. In IPv6, we do not have ARP, but it being replaced by neighbor discovery. So this is how it works. So first, they are going to send a corresponding solicited multicast, which is FF02, followed by all this number. And you notice here on the back 24 bit here they are going to use the last 24 bit that is copied from the unicast or any cast and then place it into the solicited node multicast if you are the node that have this corresponding 24 bit then you are going to reply with the MAC address so this is where we use the solicited node multicast for neighbor discovery because it's a multicast and this is a very special multicast we call that as a solicited node multicast Okay, and the second benefit of using solicited node multicast is for address detection. So if we're going to send this uh, address out into the network and assuming that the IPv6 unicast address I manually configure and if let's say there is somebody who reply back to you, uh, which means that this IP address that you just recently configured has been configured before because this is how they detect IP conflict. Okay, so I want you to remember that solicited node multicast have two uh, usage, neighbor discovery and DAD. Next, we look into IPv6 anycast address. On the previous slide, I mentioned we have a unicast or any cast. So now let's look into more detail. And any cast address identify a group of the network interface which usually belong to different nodes. And any cast address can be used as a source or destination address of the IPv6 address. So remember, any cast can be used in the source or in the destination. Let's look into this example. As you can see, I have web server number one and web server number two. You notice that both of these web server is using this any cast address 2001-0db8-84c2. Colon, colon, of course, that they already have their own unicast address in both web server one and web server two, but in addition on their unicast, they also have this uh, any cast. So PC1 and PC2 need to assess the web service provided by uh, this uh, IPv6 any cast address. 
and you'll notice that this IPv6 address is exactly the same. So PC1 is going to look for this Anycast address and based on the router, they are going to send this traffic to the nearest web server. And this is the shortest path based on the router routing table. And this is the PC2 path to the web server number two. So this is a simplified explanation on what is the Anycast address. So I want you to remember that in IPv6, there is no broadcast. They, they are only have unicast, multicast, and anycast, all right? In IPv4, we have unicast, multicast, and broadcast. IPv6 do not have broadcast. All right, so this is a new cast that I want you to remember.